Let me ask you something. Is there anything in your life, any little area of your life you haven't yet surrendered to the good shepherd? You say, Lord, I give you all of my life, take everything, but I'm going to keep this little part for myself. Let me tell you what I did years ago. I just sat down and I said, I want to list any area of my life that is not transparent to Jesus Christ, and I made a list, and I let the Holy Spirit deal with that in my life. Also, I'd recommend that you take things that may tempt you. You, you, you've fallen before, slew foot, the devil knows how to trip us up again. Why not take and make a list? Lord, this is areas that I may fall in. Boy, my tongue will speak. Uh, I'll be impatient. Uh, I'll be, whatever it might be, write those temptations down and give them to the Lord. You see, he speaks to us. He talks with us. He tabernacles with us. He lives with us. And so we see the teaching here exactly of how if the shepherd, he is our shepherd, we are to completely yield to him existentially every moment of our life. It's his. And when that happens, freedom comes, joy comes, transparency comes, and a new life begins to happen. And we realize that we're sheep and he is a shepherd. And what is a thrill it is to know that God in Jesus Christ is orchestrating our lives every second of every day. So we see here exactly the shepherd's relationship to the sheep. And then we see in the passage, a wonderful thing, we see how also the good shepherd defends the sheep and the good shepherd blesses the sheep. And more than that, the good shepherd gives bounty to the sheep. Look at it in verse 7 of John 10. Truly, truly, I say to you, Jesus, once again, say, hey, nail this down. Don't miss this. Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. We already know that. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. As sheep, we do not hear all the siren calls. We not follow all the dead-end streets that are available. We not, do not fall prey to mythology of foolishness. We not get involved in something that is called a church, but is not obedient to the principles and the prescription of a church that we find in the Bible. You see, we know authenticity. We know reality. We are enmeshed in the truth of God. Jesus says, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved, and he will go in and out and find pasture. He said, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life, here it is, and have it abundantly. Some people think that being a Christian is slow and boring and, and dull and not exciting. Jesus says, I came to give you life give you life that is overflowing. The word abundantly there means it's the picture of the ocean coming in with the tides and the tide comes in and the wave swells and it recedes only another tide comes in and the wave swells. It's a life of abundant, a life of overflowing, a life of joy. The psalmist says, God came to give you and me joy. Isn't that great? To give us joy. Abundant life, overflowing life, a pitiful life, a, a free life. That's what happens. That is his provision for us. 